So I want to share with you one story that took place right over here by the Western Wall. And I think it encapsulates in it so much for us, for our personal life. And as you hear the sounds around us, this is a place of It's a place of worship for all nations, a place where everybody, all of humanity, really wants to come together and to connect. So not so long ago, a story I heard from my father, two businessmen, they were signing a huge real estate deal right here in Jerusalem. They were in the hotel, in the business lounge, at two in the morning, they drank a lechaim, they just signed the business deal of their life. And they have a taxi taking them back to the airport at five in the morning back to New York City. Remember the days where there used to be flights and people used to fly? So they were going five in the morning and they're like, what, should we go to sleep for one hour? They decided, let's go to the Western Wall. They came here to the Western Wall in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., nobody around, pitch dark, middle of the winter, and it was like a very spiritual moment. And as they walk in, they suddenly hear that there's somebody crying at the edge of the Western Wall Plaza. He's crying with all of his heart. It was so powerful. And it moved them. One of them said, you know what? I'm gonna go up to him. He walks up to the guy and he says, Slicha, excuse me, can I help you with anything? Is everything okay? He wipes away his tears and he says, Akol beseder, achi. Everything's okay. So the guy says, okay, and he leaves, and they walk inside into the tunnel, they pray for a few minutes, they say some tehillim, they come out after a little bit, and as they're walking out, they see the guy, he's, he's still crying, and he's crying with all of his heart, with all the passion, it was so real, it was so genuine, it moved them, the other guy says, my Hebrew is better than yours, I'm gonna go up to him, and I'm gonna say, he goes up to him, he says, can we help you, you know, we're two businessmen from America, can we help you financially, medically, anything that you need, we hear that you're crying, he says, everything is okay. So they say, well, can we ask you why you're crying so much? So he said, let me tell you. He wipes off his tears. Suddenly a smile appears on his face. And he says, tonight was my baby's wedding. I have six children at home and my youngest son, when he was younger, he was in and out of hospitals. We weren't sure what was with him, what was the condition. He made it through. And tonight he got married. All of his other siblings are married, they have children, and everyone came together to the wedding. Older siblings with their kids, and me and my wife, we were there, we were glowing. It was the happiest night in my life. I came home after the wedding, I put my head on the pillow, and I'm tossing and turning, and I turned to my wife and I told her, I can't fall asleep. I have to go to the Western Wall to say thank you. I came here tonight just to say thank you. And when I'm standing here and I'm, you know, blessing God for all of the blessings I have in my life, I realized that everything started flooding with me. My whole life was flooding in and out. I wasn't, and that's why I was crying. I came here to the Western Wall three in the morning after the wedding to say thank you. And everything started flooding. The good times, the bad times, the hard times. I was just saying thank you. I don't need anything. I have parnasa, I have a livelihood, my children have a livelihood, everyone is married, but I just wanted to say thank you. Also often we come to this wall, we write a note, we write a prayer, we pray, but we're asking, what could I have? I want this, we have a bucket list, we want health, we want happiness, we want prosperity. Those are all great things and we should continue to ask for them. But sometimes I tell the groups, people who come here, maybe take a moment not just to think about what you want in your life, but add another prayer, write another line in your note of what is it that I am thankful for in my life? What do I appreciate that I already have in my life? There's something so powerful of the ability to say thank you, to admit that we need help. When one is able to genuinely say thank you, he fills up, he fills up with blessings. Remember one of my kids at home, they have a tough personality. They say, I want this, I want this. At a certain point, my wife and I, we said, that's it, you can't have anymore. You can't just say, I want, I want, I want. I remember though, when they turned 10, we gave them a little gift. And two days later on my bed, I got a note. Dear Abba and Mommy, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for me. That you love me, you take care of me. And went through a whole list. And then they, that child signed their name. 
My wife and I, we looked at each other. We were filled with love. We wanted to give that child a hug. We wanted to give them more than they have ever asked before. Because when we have the ability to say thank you to our parents, to our friends, to our spouses, they just want to shower us with more. So if we want to have blessing in this new year, if we want to have blessing coming out of this COVID-19, we need to not only ask for the next step to get better, we need to also be able to say thank you for what I already have and appreciate what I already have. Okay, so what's so special about this wall? Why is this the place that everyone comes to to connect? So I wanna just put it into perspective, try to envision a family that lived in one of the European villages and they had a beautiful house and the grandfather lived there and the father and his kids got married also. They lived three, four generations that are living, uniting a beautiful community and they've been living there for many, many years as well. And then unfortunately a war breaks out. War breaks out and the family has to run and flee. They're able to run away with just a handbag. And after many years of battle, of war, of losing some of the family. This man comes back to his community. He's looking for his house. He gets back into the city, towards the town. He finds the streets. Everything is in rubble. Everything is ruined. And as he gets closer, he starts noticing, this is my block, this is my street. And then suddenly he finds himself standing in front of one wall. And he stands there and he looks and he recognizes, this is my house. And he breaks down crying. He sees a little toy, something that used to be there on the floor and he starts crying. Now he's not just crying because his house was destroyed. He's crying because of all of the years of memories, of laughter, of beauty, of connection. That's what this house represented for him. That's what this wall represents for us as well. This wall is not just an ancient wall that represents what is lost. It doesn't just represent destruction, but rather it represents all of our collective memories. The memories of the Jewish people coming out of Egypt, coming to this place, building a center where the entire Jewish people could unite and in fact the entire world could unite and connect around. That's what we feel when we come to this place. That's what we feel when we come to this place and it's not complete. And that's why we have a custom to rip our shirt. Yes, we're celebrating the liberation of Jerusalem, but we're still praying that one day it should be completely rebuilt and that we can be back in that laughter and that unity and that connection of every single Jew and every single human being across the world could unite and connect around the values that this place represents until today. Thank you so much for being with me here today on Yom Yerushalayim on Jerusalem Day, connecting to the holiest place in the world. It's been an honor. Again, I'm ETL Goldwicht. Stay tuned on HTV, on H.com. Like us, follow us, share it with your friends. We have ongoing, amazing material on this platform all the time. So stay tuned, HTV Live. Looking forward to seeing you on our next program.